Hello, I'm Yan Yan, and welcome back to our mini courses. Today, I'm going to introduce the System Memory Management Unit and its software and hardware optimizations. Before delving into SMMU, we should probably cover MMU first. A Memory Management Unit, or MMU, is a hardware component that manages all CPU-related memory and caching operations in a computer. It is typically responsible for memory management. SMMU, short for System MMU, also known as IO MMU, refers to a hardware component that translates IO virtual addresses or direct memory access addresses of IO devices into physical addresses on the system bus. It also isolates the DMA address spaces for different devices. This figure shows the key differences between an MMU and SMMU. Typically, the MMU acts as a bridge between the CPU and memory, while the SMMU works between peripherals and memory. Though both use page tables to execute address mapping when accessing memory. SMMUs are primarily used to map IO addresses and isolate devices. For IO address mapping, the SMMU implements four main functions. Resource isolation ensures that peripherals are restricted only to specified memory. Scatter Gather is a technique that maps non-contiguous physical memory into continuous IOVA ranges. Shared virtual memory enables peripherals and user mode processes to share the same page table. Extended address access allows 32-bit peripherals to access 64-bit address space using page tables. For device isolation, the SMMU ensures that peripherals that do not match the corresponding driver cannot access system memory. To better understand the SMMU operation and the optimization processes, now let's look at some related concepts. Page table, PLB, PLBI, and command queue. Page tables are data structures used by virtual memory systems to store mappings between virtual and physical addresses. The SMMU uses page tables for address translation or mapping. A translation look-aside buffer is a memory cache that stores frequently accessed virtual to physical address translations or page table entries. It is a component of the SMMU. The TLB invalidate TLBI operation clears the TLB cache and ensures that the next virtual to physical address translation is performed by searching the page table. The next concept is command queue, which is a queue of commands sent to each SMU, including TLBI commands, page table updates, sync, and other control commands. Every SMMU has a Secnic command queue. In this figure, Prod is the producer pointer controlled by SMMU software, and Cons is the consumer pointer controlled by SMMU hardware. A Prod update indicates that the software inserts a new command into the command queue, whereas a Cons update means that the hardware takes the command out for execution. A sync command is inserted to ensure that a counts update runs only after all previous commands have been executed. Now let's take a look at the basic operation processes and primary bottlenecks encountered. Generally, a peripheral driver calls the DMA allocation coherent interface to allocate the memory and the DMA free coherent interface to free the memory allocation. The former process first allocates memory, then IOVAs, and establishes a mapping from IOVAs to PAs in SMMU. For the latter, it cancels the mapping from IOVAs to PAs and executes 
TLBI to clear the mapping clashed in the TLB. Then it frees ILVS and memory. The main bottlenecks lie in insertion and execution of TLBI plus sync commands and IOVA operations. Next, we will look at the various methods used on SMMU software or driver and hardware to resolve such bottlenecks. Let's start with SMMU software optimization. One way to optimize the sync command is to move the process of waiting for command completion outside of lock protection. This can help to reduce lock conflicts and improve overall performance. In message signal interrupt mode, the hardware writes the MSI data value to the MSI address each time a sync command is executed. The optimization applied here it enables all sync commands to share the same MSI address. And the MSI data value increases monotonically each time. Because the commands are executed in seconds, the larger MSI data value will overwrite the smaller value. In this case, each CPU core can determine whether a command execution is complete by comparing the value read from MSI address and the MSI data value of its own sync command. This is the optimization effect, with SMMU performance recorded at 25% before and 36% after this change, an 11% increase. Even with the preceding optimization, you may encounter a situation in which two back-to-back -back sync commands are concurrently inserted by two cores simultaneously along with two TLBI commands. Since just the one sync command is required in each command queue, the second sync command needs to be removed. The right figure shows the optimization effect. Here, the performance is not tested. Instead, we can see how many conflicting sync commands are reduced. According to the statistics, one-third of sync commands can be reduced in stress tests. Another method for software optimization is concurrent command insertion. Typically, CPU cores write commands to the command queue space one by one and in sequence. Core B can write its commands only after Core A finishes. By pre-allocating the command queue space, Multiple cores can write commands concurrently, thereby reducing the probability of resource conflicts and improving the efficiency. This optimization improves the performance by 89.2% in 100 GNIC interconnection scenarios, almost approaching the maximum, and improves the performance in NVMe MySQL scenarios by 29.4% reaching 93.4% of the maximum. The preceding optimization methods apply only to the strict mode, in which operations involved in the DMA-free coherent interface are performed strictly in sequence. Even if every core can quickly and concurrently complete all operations, SMMU hardware still needs to execute command 1, command 2, command 3, and so on, in serial mode. If SMMU hardware takes time x to execute command 1 to command x, the maximum number of commands that can be executed within one second is 1 over x. When each NIC needs to cancel the mapping every time 4KB data is sent and received, the maximum data performance value is 4KB times 1 over X. Non-strict mode overcomes the limitations of the strict mode. It delays the TLBI and IOVA freeing operations to ensure faster unmapping of each core and replaces all TLBI operations with a single TLBI or command to expedite the entire process. In the figure on the right, after cores A, B, and C finish unmapping and memory freeing, 
The TLBI org command is then called to invalidate all TLBs, and then the IOVAs are freed one by one. Note that the non-stream mode may cause security issues because memory is freed in advance, meaning it can be used by other applications. But the page table mapping cached in a TLB is not immediately invalidated. Before TLBIO is executed, unauthorized drivers or peripherals can access the previously mapped physical memory based on the original IOVA. If the physical memory has been used by other applications, malicious actors may find the core application data. What's more, the SMMU performance may drop abruptly in this mode because TLBIO invalidates all TLBs, including IOVA mappings that are not cancelled. Prefetching these mappings again causes high performance overhead. In addition, centralized freeing of IOVAs causes the CPU usage to remain high for a period of time. That's software optimization covered. Let's move on to hardware. This function, introduced in SMMU version 3.2, adds the number 16 to 12 and scale 24 to 22 fields to the original TLBI operation, so that a single TLBI range command can invalidate all IOVAs within an IOVA range. Initially, multiple CPU cores share one command queue. This optimization provides a set of E command queues to ensure that each core can exclusively occupy one E command queue and use its own dedicated E command queue insertion command. All E command queue commands can be executed in parallel, reducing the total execution time. The SMMU maintains only the cache node pointer of DMA32. The DMA64 search always starts from the last pointer during allocation. If a large number of DMA64 IOVAs are allocated but not freed, all allocated IOVA nodes will be traversed from the last pointer to find free IOVA spaces causing high performance overheads. The solution is to maintain cache node pointers for DMA32 and DMA64 respectively. In this case, the idle IOVAs are searched based on the positions to which the pointers point. Whenever you free an IOVA, adjust the cache node value appropriately. That's all about the SMMU and its software and hardware performance optimization. If you want to know more about it, visit our official website or the open source community. I hope you enjoyed today's course. See you next time.